Hello, everyone, and welcome to the stream. I am Ra Zim, and this is the Starlight Expeditions Poke Roll. Basically, Pokemon D&D. This is based on the Mystery Dungeon uh, franchise of Pokemon. Uh, we are going to start as normal with our introductions. Beginning with Rygon. Okay, hello. My name is Rygon from the channel Rygon Plays. I am the storyteller for this game. And what that means is that I am essentially the one who has created this world. I help the players navigate through it. I am the one who tells them the consequences of their actions. And I help to keep everything more or less flowing smoothly. I try. Emphasis on trying. I hope you all enjoy the game that we have set up for you tonight. And yeah, let's get to it. Shall we introduce our players? Absolutely. Amos? Oops, let's mute it. Hello, I'm Amos, and... I started that off wrong. Hi, I'm Wernimal, and I play Amos, and, uh... I'm excited for, uh... Whatever we run into tonight. <laughs> Amos is a Growlithe. And I'm a Growlithe, yes. Here's a question for y'all tonight. This is a character question, and I'll probably be doing these with each introduction. So, Icebreaker, if, uh, if your character were to come across a rickety bridge, would they cross it? Amos? Uh, if it didn't look like it was just right about to fall down, yeah, he'd probably try to hurry himself across it. Well, yeah, okay. better than swimming. <laughs> Touche. All right, next. Azareth. Greetings, everyone. I am Arthur David. I play Azareth, the off-color Jingmo. Uh, words failed. Icebreaker time. Uh, he would test the strength of bridge by, you know, pushing against, you know, the post... Pushing his weight against the planks, looking down below, looking around for another way around. If it seems dirty enough, yeah, he'll just go across. Okay. And um, Dart. Um, yep, Dart. A good evening, everyone. My name is Sita, and I play Dart the Steel Ground Rockruff. Uh, I'm excited to begin the second chapter of this um, campaign, and... I have a question of my own. Is the bridge over water? It's too high to see. Oh, no. I think Dart would very much weigh the options. If there's a valid reason to go around, go around. If not, then hey, you gotta push through. All right. And finally... I am Zim, and I play Jet, the ghost electric type of rock rough. And, well, we already encountered this scenario, and Jet would probably spend the entire time uh, confused from the Zubats that are attacking us. Oh, well, yeah, I assuming that. there are no Zubats, what would you do? <laughs> In that case, yes, he would probably... Uh, go across, uh, kind of hoping that his phasing will uh, and the floating thing would be able to kick in if he's in mortal danger if it falls, but otherwise uh, he, he would go across. Okay. Unfortunately, we have a few players who will be absent for today, including uh, Lyndon, who plays our very illustrious Jolene. As well as Aurum, who plays his character. What's his character? Argus. 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 For some reason, that slipped my mind. 
Otherwise, we are now going to be diving into chapter two. What this means is now the training wheels are going to be more or less off. So the content is going to be a little more, a little less directed. It's going to be a little tougher for our characters. And hopefully we will see well, just a few more things happen. I certainly look forward to it. But as our players, as our characters run away from the house that they had called home for probably about the last week, not knowing if they're being chased or not, the snow has continued to fall. And daylight appears to be slipping away. What do you all do? Continue well, running in the direction we started running off in. Real quick, Rygon, I just got a message from the artist if you want to check Telegram. Okay. But we can take care of that Telegram. Uh, so how long has it been since we left the house? Depends. How long do you all think you could run? Fair point. Probably yeah, not yeah. that long, considering we probably already spent a bunch of time running to the house from the carnival. And also uh, that we're all injured at the moment. That as well. Uh, then I'll give you all a generous five minutes. I feel like we'd probably uh, we, we would probably continue on for a while. We want to put as much space between the house and us as possible. Okay. All right. So you all have been running for five minutes. Do you all agree to continue trudging along at a slower pace after that? I think continue moving along at a pace as opposed to stopping is the better option. Yeah. Azris would agree. Okay. Yep. Should keep on moving. Where are you going? Uh, Jet's going to pull out his map that he has uh, pointing to Orn Grove. Uh, can I get a bit more description of the map? Or can he just, you know, try and locate any landmarks on it or any idea of where to go from uh, with the map or so the map as it is has a circle uh, around where you assume to be at starting point in other words right around where it had been found initially in the building right beside your house following from it you can see that it heads east going through various different streets before finally it comes to a long, thin line and stops. Which way did we run from the house? You all coincidentally ran about east, if I recall. So okay. you took the right side of the road. Yeah, because we have to drive on the right. Um... What's driving? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that. Um, moving on. Uh, Jet is going to kind of look over the map and call over Dart. I... Oh, are there, like... So I know there's a line... But is there, like, any landmarks or anything on it? Maybe uh, words pointing out this, that, or the other thing, or... There are some words on the map, but they're in a language you're not familiar with. The only thing that you can realistically see on it is maybe a rather oddly shaped building. It's about two or three blocks ahead of you. And it is shaped somewhat similar to a crescent moon. All right. Uh, I, I would say we might want to uh, 
And it is night right now, right? It is evening. Evening. So okay. night is coming, and it won't. It's not too far behind, but you know, it, there's still just a little bit of daylight. I, I would say we uh, head for this building here. So try and keep your eyes out, everybody, for a. Uh, uh, it, it looks kind of like a uh, cre crescent moon. All right, so we want to go to this building and, uh, I guess, set up camp there for the night. Uh, it kind of depends on exactly how far away it is, but it kind of looks up at the sky, uh, trying to determine just how long we have until nightfall. And it is still snowing right now, right? It is still snowing. Uh, pro probably would be a good idea to get some shelter uh, in that building if it's uh, safe enough. And he's sleeping gonna... in the snow. Yeah, the... That's st that word still doesn't sound right for the powdered water. Yeah, it's a few less syllables. I guess it is. I don't think the pronunciation of a word is important right now. Reed, let's, let's let's get some shelter. Let's get out of here. Yes, oh, yes. Uh, find the direction of this building and head towards it. Well, uh, <laughs> as far as I can tell on the map, it should be uh, just ahead. You're the one with the map. Well, let's make some haste. Amos will nod and uh, start trundling along. Okay. How this next section of the adventure is going to be broken down is every single block that you all go, I will perform a roll to see whether or not you actually encounter something. So it could be that nothing happens. Could be that something good happens. Could be that something not so good happens. You all can prepare for different uh, scenarios and occasions as you will from block to block. For example, you can choose to sneak. If you choose to sneak, your speed will all be reduced. All of you will roll for stealth rolls. And then I will roll to see if an encounter happens at all. If it does and it's an aggressive encounter, there might be a chance that you all could just get past. If not, however, then you all could just be wasting time and energy. So there's going to be a bit of a balance, and this is free form. What do you all do for the first block? Push the car or sneak. Push go. I'm kind of voting we sneak. Hmm. Has there like been any reason for us to like want to sneak? Like, is there anything that we could see or sense that would make us want to sneak or feel like we have to? Well, there are a few things that you all will have to keep in mind. The changing weather. The fact that you assumedly are running away from the tunnel rats. There is still the, uh, what do you call them? I already forgot their name. The cult is still out there. Alabaster Gleam. Thank you. Alabaster Gleam may still be out there in some form of another. Well, not also, to mention the fact. Sorry, but it? it just occurred to me that we never actually did a recap. Okay, we're in chapter two. Right, right. Gun kind of did a pseudo recap because I mean, what's their reader recap? Um, we ran away from Alabaster Gleam. Um, Tunnel Rats stabbed Ethan, and we all did a mad dash to pack up the house, leave while Jolene and Doc before surgery on Ethan, and we all managed to get away by the skin of our teeth to run away into the snowy darkness. Recap. Yep. 
Fair enough, sorry. <laughs> Fortunately, it doesn't look like this book is one that I need right now. Uh, frustrating. So, yeah. I mean, there are, there are multiple things that you all are going to have to pay attention to. Like I said, the weather, the fact that you may be being chased by multiple parties, the fact that after the carnival fiasco, there may be aggressive or scared Pokemon just all over the place who have run away themselves. There is the fact that the map could be wrong, so maybe you need to spend a little extra time navigating it and making sure that it's accurate. Um, there is Ethan, who, for all we know, may be in a more dire state than he than is being shown. And, of course, there is Doc, who has been quiet this entire time. So there's a lot of things you all are going to have to keep in mind, and your actions are going to be affecting these different values. For example, if you choose to take shelter, just in case weather comes about, well, again, you might be wasting time, and you might get caught up and attacked. If you choose to per, like run away as quickly as you can, you might actually stumble into aggressive Pokemon. And the list goes on and on. Aww. Duke. Yeah, I suppose what? we probably should sneak right now. Take Considering the proximity, we came, we came away from the house. Like, I think probably like not letting them on yeah. our trail. Uh, I, I think we should go ahead and sneak through this area. I uh, consider and we, we should definitely uh, try to be more quiet. I, I don't think we need to worry about them following our trail, but uh, they, they definitely could hear us uh, in, in when they when we were down in that cave. So we we should try and be a bit more quiet on that front or for that. Agreed. Aren't we also very talkative? during the cave? Uh, we, we were talkative until they captured uh, some of us. Oh, you all are sneaking? I believe that is the consensus, yes. All right, give me some sneak really rolls. I point in it, but I'll go along with it. And uh, the sneak roll will be uh, Dexterity uh, Survival Stealth. That's right, not Jer a great roll. <laughs> all right. Let's see what you all get. So I'm going to use this nifty little book here, and we're going to determine... After I roll a d20 myself, we're going to determine exactly what section of the city you all are in. Ah, let's see. What did that give us? Interesting. All right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And now I got to roll a 1D100. I'm going to do that offsite.
Okay, we've got a roll here. What do you all get? Oh, interesting. All right, now I need to figure out how I'm going to integrate this. As you all are making your way forward, you can hear the sounds of someone shouting. Anything yeah. else? Or is that it for now? Um, It's a bit hard to make out exactly what it is that they are saying. What you get, though, is that they are shouting it with passion. The kind of passion that you're not necessarily familiar with. As you approach forward, you can slowly smell the scent of water. And you can hear the sound of rushing water. It appears that the road up ahead has become flooded. Probably one of the many that has become flooded in the very interconnected byways of the city. What do you do? I could uh, sneak up and get an idea what's going on. Okay. Yeah, I'm um, kind of, I'm kind of thinking here. It's like, I know Jet's got one HP left. I know everybody else is struggling a bit. It, it, it's uh. What, what do we do? Um, so right. if this is an attack, then that's going to be a problem. Is there an alternative route? Uh, there might be an alternative route, but it will require you to backtrack. Oh, we're right at this uh, whole flooded part? Yeah. Um, imagine, imagine I'll go ahead and I'll draw on the board for you all. Imagine, if you will, this little line, right? Mm -hmm. This is the flooded street. You all are coming from up here. You've got a buildings on each side of you. Lots of rushing water, lots of rushing water. You aren't quite sure what you're going to be encountering if you choose to continue going up, but if you're going to be able to get around, you're going to have to backtrack. Alternatively, you could try sneaking through some of the buildings and seeing if any of them have a way across. Either way, you're going to have to either swim or find some way to get across this river, although for all you know, there could be a bridge in place too. All you know is that you can smell and hear rushing water and someone shouting. I say, I, I say we proceed. I was going to say, as with Parker's head up and say, I'll go check on ahead. Uh, I, I, I don't think uh, you should go uh, if we're going to scout it. You kind of make a lot of noise. Was anyone else going to? I'll go. Okay. Is, is that decided? Is Amos going to go? I could go for that. Azrith will not impede it. Okay. Go ahead. What do, what do you do, Amos? Uh, Amos is going to kind of, you know, scout ahead and get an idea of what's going on. Just kind of sneak up. Okay, can you go ahead and describe that to me? How how are you going to sneak? I was just kind of going to stick to uh, like the brush and kind of stay low and kind of just low crawl his way up to get a, a view. Okay. What you can see is 
as you as you approach upwards is a section of ruined buildings has managed to fall across what appears to be a makeshift river. The river itself has eroded many of the buildings around it, uh, assumedly because it's it's not a natural formation. And they have fallen across it, creating a rubbled path where the water flows over it. Near the rubbled path, you can see a small kind of like a grayish creature with a with a bluish back and wide fins in the water. They appear to have no trouble fighting against the currents and they are more or less shouting to well, to nobody in particular. All that you can really hear is the end is nigh. Everybody please Listen to my words. If you dare to touch the water, you will be consumed. Do not allow the water to flow into your lands. I have seen it. I have been a part of it. Do not touch the water. And he kind of just goes on and on and on in that kind of um, tone and, and meaning. He does not notice you, however. Alright, I'm gonna... crawl back to the others, then. Okay. What do you do? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and tell everyone what I saw. It's just uh there's a crazy guy in the water screaming about how the end is near. And there's a bunch of like eroded buildings collapsed into the water. Did you find a way across? Uh Maybe we get across those class buildings or no? The rubble. No, I mean they they went across the river. Yeah, we could get across the buildings, collapsed buildings. Well, let's get going. The uh, sooner we're farther away. What about our pool goes? Do you think those could make them um, uh, across the buildings? Well, for the water itself, it was flowing over the rubble. But it did seem a bit slower doing so as opposed to other sections of the river. It wasn't too deep, but it was swift. So if you one were to accidentally fall off, there's a chance that they might um, be swept away or pinned against the rocks. I don't know, it might not be the safest option if all our crap towed behind us. Hmm. We're not all in the best of conditions, especially Ethan. The safest bet would be to find something that doesn't even touch the water. Also, that crazy guy in the water, who knows what the fluff his intentions are. Does he move, or does he face one direction? They seem to be facing towards the path. Uh... So... 
Like, what can we see from where we are? Like, does it look like the pool goes could go over the buildings? I'm not sure how much of a gap there is, or... Well, from what Amos saw, they're wide enough to support the pole goes. Okay, then let's go. Uh, well, let's uh, go ahead and try and take the buildings then. Sounds like a good plan to me. Let's get rid of this presently. Let's get moving before it gets much colder. I don't know how much I can stand the cold before I need to stop and warm up. We put a warm paw on Arcee. <laughs> well, Arcee feels a little warmer. Azra smiles. That's warmer. All right, let's get moving. Are any of you going to be doing anything in particular before you go up there? Uh, Jet's going to probably be following behind with the uh, pull go that he is pulling. Because he is, you know, the most hurt out of everybody. But otherwise, no. And Amos just tries to hide a smile from the positive reaction of uh, putting his pawn Azareth. <laughs> All right. Then assuming none of you are sneaking or anything like that as you go up. As you all go up, um, the creature immediately catches sight of each of you. And he kind of points at one of his wide fins at you and he's just like, you, 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 you. Listen, listen, if you touch the water, something bad will happen. Do not touch it. I beg of you, do not let the water encroach upon you. Do not let it devour you like it has devoured so many others. Isn't he standing in the water? He's floating. <laughs> uh, well, it's alright we weren't planning on uh, touching the water we're gonna go across this way hey Arzy we can hear you breathing just a bit so you're gonna be going across Over the buildings, yeah. Okay, is that a group consensus? Yep. yep. All right. Then for each of you, I am going to need you to roll some, what do you call it? Uh, some strength, survival, athletic. And it seems RZ has had to step away for a bit.
Then for the rest of you, go ahead and you take your first paw steps onto the rubble building. It shakes underneath you, as to be expected. It's not a very stable platform. But slowly, as each of you get your bearings, water flowing around your paws, you begin to trudge forward. Wait, what are you all doing? No, do not step in the water. Did you hear me? Something bad will happen. The great worm will come. The great worm. Oh, oh my. Oh. Please, no, for he carves great swaths within the city. He will devour you if you do not. Please do not step in the water. Go find the safety of land while you can. Wait, did are we stepping in the water or? Yes, I said the water was flowing over the rubble. Oh, oh! I think we all back. misunderstood that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about, you kook? Why? I am no coop. I have seen things. I stay here to warn others. I have seen it. It devours whole everyone. It will Everyone's devour you too. Points of the paw and you're in the water. Yes, yes, for I am one of its chosen. One of the ones safe from its jaws. You are not, however. It hates it when others step into its territory. It hates it. <laughs> Please run while you can. We're making haste across. Like how 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 long would it take us to cross? Uh, judging from it's about the width of a street. You can see that it, if you hurry, it'll take you about mm, about three to five minutes. Because you got to test the, each bit of rubble. If you choose to just go haphazardly, though, it'll take you about 30 seconds. But in that case, uh, we could get, uh, we could damage the pole ghosts. Precisely. Oh, I guess we really lost Arzy. Hopefully he comes back. Uh, anyways, um... Yeah, I, I see nothing else but to just, uh... Kind of go... Go across, uh, taking our time. Okay. Here, let's put this on pause real quick. I'll just message him, see what's going on. Warning, worm sign. Where is an ornithopter when you need it? I, I, I'm half expecting the card. But don't play the card, well. I know you have more of them. While this is on pause. <laughs> and also while it's on pause, um, as for Khan, we do not know what uh, Pokemon uh, anyone that we come across is uh, by default. Uh, Rygon gives very detailed uh, descriptions of them all, very purposeful ones. So Duke. it's up to us and all of you to figure it out and piece it together. Uh, there, I uh, do keep in mind that we do have our own regional variants to some of the uh, Pokemon. So it may be a, y you know, it may wind up being completely different. Uh, you know, it may be similar to one, but described differently because it's a different variety. I don't think I'm explaining that well. 
I think you're explained pretty well. Like, you know, this is a completely custom world and a custom setting with custom Pokemon. You know, two of our party members here are um, completely different custom regional variants. And um, I think three of the others are slightly different colorations of what you would find. I know we came across I, some Sableyes that were uh, described, you know, slightly, they were described very similar to Sableye, but as different colors. And it turned out that they were normal types as opposed to the normal ghost type. If no one expected a Diglett with a knife. I mean, Jits, uh, I believe Argus is a standard Tyrant. I don't think he's different colored. And Amos is pretty similar to a standard Growlithe. Just uh, a little bit of uh, brown in his tan parts, his tan hair. A luscious tan hair. Magic Shadow, yes, we are Pokemon too. This is a Pokemon mystery dungeon type uh, tabletop campaign. Uh, so we are all playing Pokemon as well. Tyrant is special in your hearts. <laughs> Fair enough. Alright, RZ says that they will not be coming back, so we shall continue. Alright, we are moving across the Good. water then. Or how are you doing so? Uh, through... So there is nothing that has a... Uh... There is nothing that has that is not covered by water here, correct? Correct. Everything has a little bit of water kind of flowing over it. Uh, before we start to cross, uh, maybe we can uh, find something to cover the water. Uh, I mean... He doesn't seem to all be all there, but at the same time, it is kind of cold out here for him to just be sitting there without any particular reason. Uh, may maybe a brief look at least uh, might not be a bad idea. There are other houses and such around, right? Yeah, there's a few um, buildings. What are you looking for? I mean... Uh, well, we could uh, look, look for several things that we could move into... To, into the water to cross it more... Without touching the water ourselves, uh, alternatively, uh, maybe something to float across ourselves. He's going to look at the uh, guy and kind of repeat that idea, followed by, uh, is that, w would that be okay? As long as we don't touch it ourselves? The individual just kind of looks at each of you and it's just like, I don't know. I would imagine so, but if even so much as a single drop it touches even in one of you, that might be enough to seal your fate. Uh, I dare um... risk. Maybe you could help us cross safely then? Uh, we, we do have somebody injured here and we have to get across to get to some safety. I, like, you if seem... You 
If you can find me a flotation, I can go ahead and help you get across. However, I cannot promise that he won't show. Hmm. So we'd be potentially wasting time trying to find a flotation, time that could be spent crossing. Hmm? Oh, it seems like Wernimal has muted and deafened as well. Should we just wait? I don't know if we have enough players now. I think that is fair. And I was having fun! <sighs> I don't know. I think we could carry the show, Seda. We'll just carry the whole, uh... The, the whole team on our backs. It's but time for... But I only have for... two dots of strength. <laughs> no, no. It's time for us to evolve. Oh, is it time not for to lichen rocks. Not, uh, not to lichen rocks. We, we evolve into bigger rock roughs. Mega rock Big rough. Rock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd like to at least get past this scene so we're not stopping in the middle of it, though. After that, we could, if Wernie's not back. Well, I think I think it's a very much a key distinction of like the con th this this choice is kind of important. I don't think I feel comfortable with being two players to make it because we can either help the help the individual, you know. Uh, or get what they need to help have them help us get across through no guarantee of safety or we could try making way ourselves ignoring their potential aid and um, getting stuck anyway so it's kind of like a risk versus time sink could also I guess just cancel the session too Uh, have we poked warning? I believe Wernie did post that he was going to potentially have some issues. Well, I'll, I'll leave it up to you two. But we are, you know, right now just have two players. Four out. For the moment. Uh, Rachella, yes, the, our the tabletop uh, stream loots cards do work here. I mean, the uh, this game is hosted on both channels, Rachella. Like, I don't, I, I'm not the storyteller for any of the games here, but it is hosted on both channels. And to be fair, I did, I, I was kind of the one that put together the group, found the players and stuff. I just lucked out as having met uh, Rygon and finding out Hello. that the, he was a fantastic storyteller. Like, I figured he'd be great. I didn't anticipate him being amazing. But yes, uh, ethereal influence, tabletop uh, cards through stream loots, uh, etc., etc. They are valid and do work on this game. I say we'll give it about... Um five minutes and I guess if we don't have our players return cancel cancel for the evening okay. I, th I think that's I, I I I say five minutes and then we can have a conversation because we are I agree we're kind of in a bit of a weirdly perilous spot that like it doesn't make sense for us to be continuing with just two people 
If we were around a campfire, then maybe, but I don't think it's logical. Just, we could also just do a retcon and just have you all around a campfire or whatever. I'm intrigued by this situation. As am I. Like, this seems like a very interesting situation that I want to see play out. Just play some music right. on my channel then, and we'll just see how this goes. Let me send you your pack of each I mean, at the least, we can spend the time chatting with chat. Your pack has been sent to each other. Uh, Jits, uh, I, I believe that this is a minor side quest, I, I think. But then again, with Rygon, it might be it, like it might have started as a minor side quest and turned out to be a major plot point later. We have to stay right. on our toes and keep track of everything. Wait, Apology. a legendary? RZ, Welcome you're back. Welcome back, RZ. Are you feeling any better? Is there anything we can do for you? It's more or less I have to get used to push to talk, which... is a lot. I do hear ya, I hear ya. Well, thank you for returning. We appreciate having you here. Right now we're on a quick pause, um, waiting for where I need to get back. Well, I mean, um, at least if we've got Arzy back, we I think we could continue. Uh, it's well, up to, to you all. Um, I think we gave uh, Warney the five minutes. Oh, I agree, but... Well, in the meantime, we can still plot. I'm liking the idea of trying to find a flotation device of some sort. Okay. Oh, I'm here. I had a Talk to our friend for a second. That's fine, Wernie. Just don't forget to let us know if you're stepping away, please. Okay. Yeah, I feel like... I feel like the... I feel like us tr plotting ahead might be the unwise decision. Okay. Um, if we try to fl find a flotation device... We are risking, you know, the tunnel rats finding us and catching up. We are risking that um, this individual might be lying to us or misleading us. But I feel like it'd be a bigger fault on us to at least not trust this individual that they can help us across because, well, what if they're right and we get halfway across and we are ambushed? Um, by whatever creature they are warning about. And we didn't even, you know, heed their advice. I'd feel like I'd rather take the risk of them misleading us and double-crossing us or versus us just completely ignoring their advice. What's that I hear in the background? Pitchforks and torches? <laughs> the clatter of knives strapped to diglets? 
<laughs> well, the way I see it, we could backtrack and try to find another route. It could wind up with us uh, getting lost and not finding our way with the map. If we do that, there's also the fact that that will take time that the that we could spend on trying to find a flotation device. Or more importantly, healthy, helping Ethan. Yes, and we don't know exactly how deep it can get. Like, there is rubble and stuff, but that rubble could get deeper in the middle. Like, the water could get deeper in the middle. And I don't think that water flowing across, you know, trying to, when they're trying to operate on Ethan, as I assume they're still trying to do. Um, no, Doc is just kind of standing by Ethan's side, just occasionally checking in on him. He's not oh. actively performing any operation at the moment, as he seems to be stable. Okay. I yeah, I yeah. remembered us... Oh, sorry, RZ. Why has one of us, you know, gone across ourselves first without the others? Dart? <laughs> Just volunteering dart to go across. <laughs> Doesn't seem very wise for us to be, be separating, especially for such a wide river. I would agree. Uh, separating is probably not the best option. I, I, I think we, we should try and find a flotation device real quick. At the least, it's just a little bit more time. Uh, something that they can help us get across with. Okay. So we're, hey, uh, hey, my chat. First one to say a building type. That's what they're going to go into. That's what they're going to find. Continue. Somebody just write. Wait. Oh. Keep that beat. Okay. I was going to go write Boat Warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> boat Warehouse would be funny. Oh, my. There's a conveniently located Boat Warehouse right next to this flood. <laughs> oh, my. When did this turn into a pirate campaign? <laughs> Insert part of the campaign's music. Wait. Disney. Right. Dun, 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 dun. Let me see here. 100 hazards and disasters, maybe next time. Let's see. Ah, here we go. Here's a good book. Let me go ahead and I will roll my die. It's a trap! Well, Stein would like a trap. Okie dokie. Oh, that's an interesting uh, thing. Oh, okay. I've got my next little setup going. What do y'all do? Was that a question? What do we all do? Yeah, what are y'all doing? Oh, um, I'm. I was, I was going to ask the individual, like, you know, where where we find such a device. I don't know. I float. I I would say we go uh, check through uh, one of these buildings, uh, see what we might find there. this pretty reasonable let's um let's uh let's pair up and search around it's loading up so many books and it's lagging all right so you're you're gonna go into the nearest building then 
Uh, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think I think it's a good place to start. I agree. Uh, oh, that's an interesting one. Huh, interesting. Okay. So as you all go into the building, it appears to be made out of brick and is about three stories tall. You can see an indiscernible writing on top, just something akin to like, um, something, something, tree? It's actually it's actually rather rather hard to to tell because even though you can't really read the language, the language itself is muddled and worn, almost as if the building has been subject to the environment for a very long time. As soon as you enter, there is the smell of mildew and water. Here's the river has managed to sink itself within the depths of the building, and most assumedly is probably. Um, flooded some of the rooms therein. You can see clearly in front of you a staircase, and you can see about four different doors on the first floor. Uh, you mentioned that some of it's been flooded. It sounds and f smells like it's been flooded. You can very clearly um, tell that the river has uh, come into the building in some form or fashion. As it has for many of the buildings around it. Uh, Jet's going to kind of avoid the the main floor then and go up the stairs to the second okay what are the rest of you doing uh, i'm gonna follow jet up to the second floor i'm thinking more looking at the third floor to start but i'm gonna just follow jet up so far okay Are you wearing them? I'm thinking right now. You know, just to keep things moving along. I'll go. Azrath will go with Jet and Dart. Just okay, to keep okay. things moving along. Wear animal? Nope. Just a moment. Okay, it was getting asked a thing. Oh, what, what were we doing? Um, they are investigating a building. They went up to the second floor. What are you doing? Uh, Amos is gonna wanna. Wait, did they already leave or? Yeah, they're they're in the building and they went up, and I assume they're starting to head upstairs. Yep, there is. We're on the ground floor. There's four doors. It's reeks of mold. Three floors to the building. We're heading up to the second floor. All right. Uh... We can oh, okay. assume Sorry. that uh, the bottom floor is probably flooded. All right. I'm trying to decide what I what I most would want to do here. Um, I think he probably want Amos probably wants to follow along. He's trying to want to figure out what's going 
You know, see okay. this building. So y'all are just gonna leave the push goes outside and um with uh Jolene and Argus? I think that's a And Doc. Oh and Doc, but um I think that's a wise decision. And most yeah. of the time we had spend searching, but also not leaving it unintended. Okay. Yeah, if anything happens, Argus will probably scream. Yeah. I was thinking like, you know, I should you know, watch the full go No, we got two other characters there as well. We're fine. <laughs> oh, um, yes. Go ahead. All right, so you all uh, go up to the second floor. You can see six doors up here. Three on the left, three on the right. They each appear to have a number stapled by them. One, two, three, four five and six you can see further ahead another set of stairs going up the smell of mold here is less so than it is on the first floor but it's still relatively strong shall we start things off just look around at the door each number uh, yeah, I mean, there's four of us, four rooms. Six, six rooms. Oh, I thought there was only four. Four the base level, two on the upper level. Or sorry, six on the upper level. Okay. Well, then, uh, I'd say, uh, two of us go in the one room, two in the two room, and... We can kind of help speed up the search that way. Okay. Uh, how do you uh, how do you all get into the rooms? Uh, what kind of door handles do they have? Uh, they have those kind of like turn door handles, like the bar ones. You you can all do it with paws. Uh. If we're talking about getting into a room, uh, as with try, you know, using a paw, or like push open the door first, that would most likely fail. Then we try leaping up using a uh, his jaw to turn open the door. Okay, it's locked. He's gonna blink a few times and then just. Take a couple steps back and bash into it. Okay. The door gives way very easily underneath your strength. Uh, the wood has was old and very unstable. Turns out, though, that there is no room on the other side. That part of the building had it collapsed away thanks to the river, and um, you find yourself in empty air. Um, real quick. Seda? Yes? Could you get, uh, Avi on voice? Uh, I could see why. A thing has been done. I already cleared it was okay with Rygon, but we'll get to it in okay, a little uh, bit. Uh, let me see. So the room, while we're waiting for that, uh, the room is musty, you said? The room is not tell. there. Oh, the room's not, not there. there. So I want to clarify. I want to ask something. Azrith finds himself in empty air. Yes. As in, he sees the empty air, or he's literally standing above nothing? Uh, literally above nothing. Oh, he's about to fall, isn't he? Yes. What role to try and grab Azrith? Because I was going to suggest that Jet was, you know, Azrith and Jet go together and Dart and Amos together. Oh, you could try rolling a um, dexterity survival athletic. Uh, 
He's gonna try and bite onto one of the plates. Okay, you're you've got a hold of um their tail. <laughs> Jet's gonna try and brace himself uh, against the uh wall on the side of the you know hole. Okay. Um and kind of growl over to the others loudly. Burger. Dart's going to rush on over and help Jet. Try to tug, tug both of them back. And hey, what about you, Animal? What are you up to? Um... I think it's gonna find a room and pick old pick a room and go and check it out and see what's inside. Okay, so you're just in, it can just ignoring the chaos that's going on right now. All was going on. Where any? I'm gonna need you to focus a little bit. Uh, Arzee's um, Azareth's character or Azareth is currently hanging in midair while. Um, Jet has him by the tail, trying to keep him from falling into the river below. And Dart is trying to help him haul him back up. Oh, oh I can run over to Dart and grab onto Dart's tail and pull on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all together, you all do manage to successfully get Arz um, Azareth back up onto safety. Right. Breathing heavily from the fear of falling now. Alex gives a reply of, Thank you. I was not expecting... That. Yeah, Azura, don't do that again. I, I, we, we should have a, l a little bit more uh, caution with uh, trying to get into these rooms. Maybe next uh, no, or next door I can try and do my uh, phase thing to try and look through. Before we bash it down. Yeah? I agree. Alright. Real quick, if this is okay, Rykon. Go ahead. AV, you there? Hello, hello. Excellent. There you both go. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so cute. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Right, that's it. I'm so sorry for interrupting your shit, but oh my god. I mean I'm enjoying this personally. <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless right now. Go. God. I don't. I don't know how. I. I. I just got. I just. Just got myself together. <laughs> this. Just. I'm just. Yeah. I'm, what? It, I, no. No. Um, petition to uh -oh. have, ha petition to have Zim get his evil characters tag because um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's illegal to be breaking my boyfriend this many times in one evening. 
<laughs> Only I'm allowed to break him this many times in yeah, one evening. I'm, I today it's just, I think it's it's just is it break Avi day? Like, <laughs> did, did I miss the memo today? Oh. Oh my gosh. Hey. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mostly just wanted to get a timestamp of your guys' reaction live for <laughs> Mary later. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 I don't. I. No. I. I can't handle. It. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> but I, I, I. I. I love you so much, sir. And Sim, thank you so much. Happily. I, I, <laughs> I I don't know how many I I I I I yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry that I can't find words right now. Um, because I'm just I I I I, I can't. <laughs> I, I, oh my gosh. You're fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, sorry, so hard. I, I had to. <laughs> oh my god. I'm, I'm like, I am being like overloaded by the level of cute by this. Yeah. Yes, done, Brian. A very broken Avi. A very broken. Yes. I just. I know. I know. I know. I'm, I know. I say this a lot. I say this a lot in my stream. And um, and I say this a lot. And I will always say this, no matter what. Zeta, sweetheart, I love you so much. And again, Sim, thank you so much for this. And thank you, to, and Mary as well. Thank, thank you so much for this. I, I actually just lost my words. And <laughs> you're good. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just I, I yeah. <laughs> I, there's only so many times. <laughs> there's only so many times I could like recover. I'm being, being broken by how cute this is, and oh my gosh, just I just want to say thank you, and. Not a problem. Yes. yes. Very, very, <laughs> yes. Just being a very broken hobby. Yes. <laughs> well, I will oh, let you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, and anyway, anyway, so thank, again, thank you so much for having, you know, kind of inviting me over for a brief moment and really sorry for you know, got an into your game for a little while, and as always, sweetheart, I love you, and I hope you all have a wonderful night and in your in poke rolls. You as well. Have a good yep, night. I, 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 I love you too, sweetheart. I, Zim, Mary, thank you so much for facil facilitating this. Rygon, thank you for letting us take the time out of the session to show this off. I... I, 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 I,
Egg. 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 Excuse me, I'm going to go enjoy this egg with Abby. Yep. Let's. Well, okay. no, you got to yep. stay here. You're you're in the egg. game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we just need to get like a find a Garchomp character, then Abby can be in the game too. Wait. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyway, so. Uh. Yeah. Sorry about. Sorry. Sorry about that. Right. God. Um. Yeah. Um. Y'all, y'all enjoy the stream, and, and you know, follow all these good beans. If you're not, it, follow them. Uh, it, anyways, though, um, yeah, th thank you so much for having me over for, for for the time being, and I'm going to go and try to pick, pick up the pieces of myself and, <laughs> and to get the myself together. Take myself back together. So Denbride, no. Denbride, no. <laughs> Not his most recent comment, but the one before that. Oh, no. I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Again. What, what Pokemon is going to hatch? <laughs> uh, again, thank you. Thank you so of much. Of course. Have a good night. Uh. So, <laughs> back to it then. Yes. <laughs> Right, gone. Oof. Right, gone. It's lost in Rygon's tales. I fear come. Guess he's right gone. <laughs> oh, you got all got done? Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Now back to the horror. Ah! So we got uh, RZ pulled back up. Uh, I I'd say we go with uh, Amos and Dart with their door next. Okay, uh, door number two. All right. Amos is going to try to look cool and stand up on his hind legs and give it a kick and proceed to fall back on his back. But maybe the door opens. We'll find out. It's locked. Darn. Well, I uh, want to try the other door. Uh, let's try. Let's try the other doors. All of them are locked. Heck. What kind of locks are on these doors? Simple locks, old, rusted. Amos just kind of mutters, too bad we don't have that dude who had all those keys a while back. Yeah, you know, he might actually have been pretty useful here. Um, well, I guess if everything is locked, then... Uh, let, let me try and see if I can get this to work. Uh, Jet's going to try and phase his head through one of the doors to try and... Peek through. Okay. I can't remember. It was a one d eight or something we had you roll on? One d six. All right, go ahead. Got jet can no clip. 
I believe that is a fail. Okay, Jet cannot no clip in this instance. <laughs> you just headbutt the door. Ow! Hey, Moses says, uh, "Nice going, Jet." Hey, you you try having this kind of thing you can do. I mean, I Not could easy try to burn the door down. You risk burning down the entire building. Eh. Well, I mean, worst comes to worst, the building falls back into the water. Uh, Azareth, why, why don't you uh, try and uh, a slightly less head butt like you did with the other one? Just try not to, you know, go through the doorway. Okay, I will give a try. He'll just walk up to the door and just apply pressure with his head crest. Okay, which Push door it. you'll doing? Ah, uh, on what was it? Amos's and Dart's side. Can you just give me a number? One, two, three, four, five, six, please. Apologies. Um. Let's say door number three. Okay. You push against it with your head crest, and the door, uh, weak as it is, is able to swing open. You see the same situation as it was with door number one. Just the room has collapsed away. After seeing that, he'll go do it on door number four. Yep. You go over to the other side of the hall. Uh, pushing against the door, you find that this door is a little stronger than the other two. Straining a bit, Azrith will say, This one gives more resistance than the others. And then he's going to take a small step and headbutt it. Jet's on standby to grab his tail again. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me a strength, please. Just a straight strength. Huh? Time for bashing something? Gip Gab has given you a free six. So that four would be replaced with a six. Okay, you just you punch a hole in it with your head. You're stuck. Ah. Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you if you had used you know some exercise strength, you probably would have been able to bash it just right. But since you know you just went ahead and just got that six, you just you just put a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, that's but going you can see just... that the room is intact on the other side. Oh, okay. I was just gonna be like. <laughs> Good news. Uh, room's intact. R room is here. Bad news. I'm a. Uh, uh, flail's legs. Um. Uh, w what? I uh, just. I can't move. I'm just imagining okay. that he okay. Okay. Can, 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 can we get? Can we kick him through, or do we have to push pull him out? I think we'll we need a look to look at the design of his body. I think we need to wait until he sheds his head scale. Okay, we'll kick him through. <laughs> wait, 
shed head scale, but the head scale is already through on the other side. There's yeah, so it's it's going to be easy to push the rest of your body through. Just push. Never mind. I should let you guys figure this out. Or, I don't... um. Can, can you uh like put put your uh kind of look up maybe and uh, we can try and pull you back through. Or, uh, Amos, uh, maybe you can try and burn part of the rest of the door away or something to let him get free. Uh, precision, preferably. Could try. I don't know. I want to cook him. Uh, Amos is going to try to use a little bit of a flame to burn the door a little bit. Try to you know, make a little torch kind of and burn a hole. You can't You're cook You're gonna try and set the splintered wood on fire. Here. And uh, one of Amos's dice has been replaced with a six. Oh no! <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna right. attempt it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, you succeed. Door's on fire. Azra's still stuck though. And the door's on fire. Hey, it's getting kind of warm in here. What are you guys doing? What? Uh, no, no, don't worry the about it. Bird. <laughs> it is gonna blink and then just try to well. wiggle his way completely through the door. Okay, go ahead and give me a strength check. Dorf's just gonna face Paul and just be like, well, this is going swimmingly. Oh, that's bad. Oh. Especially with the get... card that was just played. So... What, what was the card? The card was all in, meaning, uh... You know. Well, it's meant for an attack, so it's up to you if you want to use it on this Rygon, but it means I that, zero. uh... If it hits, it's a crit. If it misses, it's a fumble. Yeah, we'll make it count. Oh, as much as I'm dreading this, I'm also smiling. This is hilarious. So as you're trying to squeeze through, you try to bring a paw up so you could, you know, kind of get it through the hole or help whatever. And you miss, and now your paw's stuck. It made its own little hole. Uh, a dart. Uh, maybe uh, you can try and shoot your thing through, like, um, oh, that would be getting really close, but uh, how on fire is the door? <laughs> Oh, it's pretty on fire now. Oh, no. There's little ashes kind of falling on um, Azrit's back. Ah, ow, hot, hot. Someone just push me through the door. Ah, hot, 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 hot. J Jet's going you know, I'm to... Gonna... I'm, I'm going to make an unwise decision. Actually, no. Hmm. Okay, maybe that's too unwise. You know, I'm going to shoot the door. You will fall yet. Seda, you have an additional die to roll. Why is no one pushing? Oh, look, I'm going to oh, help oh, make the hole bigger. This is fine. <laughs> we, we are totally not doing the Pokemon version of the uh, community scene right now. 
Uh, but yeah, I'm going to use um, pellet shot at the door. Try to like go somewhere between where his head is and where his paw is. Just kind of like open up a bigger hole. Okay. Um, for this extra dice, would you like that to be on the accuracy or on the damage? Oh, you can roll for accuracy. Okie dokie. Um, it is specifically the next roll, so... Okay, uh, so this will be with the, my dexterity fight channel plus one. Let me know what you roll. A one. A one? one Azra, how much health do you have? I have three HP... Okay. Why is nobody doing the smart thing and just pushing him? Anyway, you get clonked on the back of the head with a pellet. And now you're Ow. unconscious. <laughs> so there is the uh, thing. No, 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 just a thunk or a ricocheting metal. And um, his, the flailing dragon now, now is just limp. Uh, I'm gonna totally own this. Okay, perfect. He's now gonna stop um, resisting. Uh, Jet, help me try. Did, 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 did you kill him? No, um, he, he's just taking a nap. Just, gra gra just grab his leg. Pull him. Jet's going to cautiously go over and grab one of the legs and try to pull him out. Okay. Well, his plates are still stuck uh, stuck there. So if you want to pull him out, you gotta you gotta put some serious strength into that. Uh, Amos, get get his tail. Purple puppy powers go. He bites onto tail. Oh, this 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 is glorious. I assume you want straight uh, strength checks from all of us. Oh, yeah. Anything else? Just strength? Yep. Better hope you don't roll too well. Or Azeroth's not going to have a tail. Ah! Maybe he'll just grow it back like lizards. Well, uh, Dart got a zero, Jet got a zero, and Amos got a one. Try again. Hey, right, right, guy, okay. We're not quoting here, guys. Do it on one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, nothing happens. Dang it. It appears that each of you were expecting each other to put in more strength than the other one was. So, uh, coincidentally, none of you actually put any effort in. Okay, can we try again? Yeah, but now you all are suspicious of each other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to do this like as was like to fun for it. Okay, ready? One, two, four. Did what you all roll? Uh, I rolled a one. Uh, we all rolled, rolled ones. Yep, three all ones. Right. All right, I'll, I'll say. You all do manage to pull. Azrith has now been unstuck from the door. The door is still on fire, though, and now it's all over all of you. Ah. It is a very fragile door. Oh, so like the door fell over on us? Yeah, it it it. it it's literally just a cheap ass plywood door. <laughs> like that shit fell apart. It's you're covered in the bits and pieces of now the flaming plywood door. <laughs> Doors. Starts to start just, rolling. It was just blow some of it off of them. It's like quick like side. Blow some air to blow some of it off. Jet, Jet's trying to back up quickly. 
Frodo's rolling on the ground, trying to get the fi fiery wood off him. Okay. All right, so now you are no longer on fire. Thankfully. Oof. Dark? Or Jet? Yes. What are you doing? Uh, he is uh, backing up very quickly. <sighs> kind of shaking himself the off and stuff. The door behind you was still open. Why'd you back right out the open door? To the <laughs> Wait, room what? Nothing. Yeah. I thought we were... Oh. It's a hallway. Hallways aren't that wide. No, they're not. Well, I'm sticking with it. Because, well, okay. that's probably what Jet would have thought to do. And might not be wise, but... Yeah, you're just, you find yourself kind of on fire now in midair above a river what do uh he's gonna try and bite onto the side as soon as he realizes so they okay. bite onto anything or claw onto anything go ahead and give me a dexterity uh survival athletic Three. Okay, you managed to hang on to the plywood door. Bro, oh, Fluff, where did Jet go? Dart's gonna look around, try to find where the the paddock jet noises are coming from. <laughs> I mean, you all easily find him. Right, we're gonna Ezra is still unconscious, however. All right, we're gonna help Jet off the door or off off the frame, back inside. Gonna bite on to Jet and try to pull him inside. Okay. If you all want to manage to do that, you're gonna have to lean out into the abyss and try to pull him back. Okay. You got it. Go ahead and give me a dex dex roll. Do you want any rolls from me? No, oh, no, you're good. Okay. I wouldn't exactly say I'm good, but okay. <laughs> What'd you all get? Uh, Amos got a one, I got a two. Alright. You both working together. That unconscious Azra. And two, lean out. Grab Jet. And you slowly swing the door shut with him attached to it. Congratulations. You all have opened a door. Woo! What? Wow. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that that loudly, but you know, doors, people in DD. &D. Well, anyway, we did a thing. That has been two traps. Oh. It's also. The first one was a trap. This one was the result of a too strong roll. Yes, those can happen. <laughs> That's kind of just uh, panting a bit before he kind of realizes uh, Azeroth is still in the pile of uh, burning wood. And he's going to go over and try to pat it out or something. 
Okay. Azeroth has now been padded out. And the rest of the wood. If there is any more that's still on fire. Okay. All the wood has now been put out. Leaving just small cinders behind. Uh, Jet's going to kind of uh, bap Azerith until uh, he wakes up. Okay, you're going to need to make a med check for that one. So let's see what we got here. Uh, go ahead and give me a um, vitality. Uh, survival perform. Oh, no. I got four. Uh-huh. Tell me, what do you think is going to happen when you roll the four? <laughs> I mean, it's a beautiful-looking roll, but... Now I'm scared of everything! Even good rolls, Ryan, go ahead! The building explodes. <laughs> Uh, you perform medical checks on him so well that he transcends the plane of existence. <laughs> Jet helps him on to the afterlife. <laughs> what do you think happens? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> As a Gets so healthy, he explodes. I think I successfully shake him awake with no downsides. This is what actually happened. As you are bapping, as you're awake, you spot a small little injury that he's sustained before and instinctively you give it a lick to help it heal up and Azrith oh, slowly no. comes to. Azrith, you have regained one hit point. Oh, okay. Yay! As soon as you mentioned Lick, I'm like, oh no, you're not making me paralyze him, are you? <laughs> uh, is that... uh, good, good, you're awake now. We got a job to do. Oh, so you're finally awake. Why? <laughs> you, you were caught trying to cross the border, weren't you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I could not resist. I could not resist. <laughs> uh, so, uh, hey, hey, uh, you feeling better now, Azrith? Uh, good news, we got you out of the, uh, uh out of the, uh, we, we got you out of the, uh, hole. <laughs> You're welcome. Paul. Oh, uh, I set it on fire. Uh, you said uh, yeah, Um, Slowly. Amos performed his duties admirably. Aspects will slowly get up now. Still completely. Uh, not fully grasping his senses because he just woke up. So he's not going to understand for a while until maybe later and someone directly tells him that, uh, what happened. You don't tell him what happened. Ah, uh, oh, by the way, we got the door open. Ah. Uh, yeah, see, the room's... There, not gone. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 get up and let's go explore it and see what we can find. Uh, okay. Forward. Oh god, I gave Az with a concussion. <laughs> Oh, I enjoy this game so much. Uh, so yeah, we're going into the room and kind of looking around carefully. Okay. Um, don't know why you all are looking around honestly that carefully. Uh, the room is relatively small. Not much in it. You can see what appear to be a pile of rotting clothes and over in just one corner. Um, you can see various um, furniture in disarray and others. In the middle, you can see a bed that has been carved into the shape of a canoe. You have a plan? Ooh. It seems whoever owned this room in some many, many, many years or millennia prior really did enjoy boats. I think we found our flotation device. Yo, guys. Pre-boat. Good job, Azareth. Yay! Yeah. He's smiling. Over-complimentary Azareth so I don't get immediately blamed for giving you a concussion later. What was that? Let's go grab. Let's go grab this flotation thingy and bring it down to the fish. I'll push it. Okay, so how y'all can get out of the room? It fit through the door. Oh. What door? I was about to say, like, good point. Can it fit through the door frame? Yes. Okay, cool. It's like, okay. okay everyone, Turns out having a bed shaped into a canoe does not make for um, a very wide bed. Poor bastard. Could have been snivvy. But, uh, but no... Uh, Dart's gonna just say, okay, let's all grab, you know, a side and let's um, carry this down. I'll push it from behind with my head crest lodged in between, you know, the. Basically, the, heart, the indent on its head crest. Pushed up against the uh, end of it, and then he pushes up against it while the other people hold up against the side. And one person spots. Okay, so you're you're pushing it? Yes. Okay. All right, for the um, sake of moving this along, you all are able to successfully get it out of the building with only a minor of knockings against the walls and yourselves. Maybe one almost fatal accident down the stairs, but you all are able to get it outside. Congratulations, your misadventure has resulted in one boat. Hey, Amos will jump on top of the boat and say, All right, now I'll be Captain Amos. And will we like to ride this rickety bunch of wood? down this bunch of water. We should probably talk to the stranger in the in the river. I don't like that guy. He seems weird. I, I think well, he would warners. still I, I think he would still be useful to talk to him and at least uh, get him to help us across. Hear him out.
Is this going to be big enough for the pool goes? I don't know. It's a bed made for a guy who probably never got laid, so you tell me. Oh my god! Funny. Also, um, I'm actually more worried about the current. Of the river. I I'm going to guess that we can at least fit one pull go on it at a time. Uh, I, I would say that we uh, send the pull go. Uh, we send the, uh, the the supply pull go uh, across first. Uh, maybe send Argus and well, Jolene could just float across. Uh, send them both across, and then uh, they can come back and get the rest of us. Okay. But what happens if you leave um, the predator with the prey? But if you leave the prey with a grain, then obviously the grain's going to be eaten and you're not going to have anything left behind. But if you leave the predator with the prey, the that prey is not the situation! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were doing a puzzle there for a second. Oh, I'm just taking into account that, that it's not big enough for, at least based on what you said, it's not big enough for both pull goes at once, but I'm thinking it's big enough. Again, based on what you're saying, it seems like it's big enough for one pull go at a time. So we send Argus yes. and Jolene with it so they can watch it until the rest of us get across. And we're specifically sending the supply one first, just in case one, it doesn't float. Uh, and two, this thing does actually attack. I mean, granted, it would be sacrificing... Well, I, I, I believe in Argus and Jolene. I think they can survive. But at least if it gets attacked, it's just the supplies that are destroyed rather than, you know, Ethan, who is on the, you know, very injured and stuff. Supplies could be it's replaced. Reasonable. Ethan can't. Exactly. So yeah. Uh, hey, uh, we found something that looks like it can float us across. If you're still willing to help us. Oh, I see you managed to find one of the life preservers. Oh, that will be great. He won't know if you're in one. He does not see very well, you see. But it does not seem very stable. What if you were to be touched by a drop of water? I believe that you can get us across safely. I don't know. That's an awful lot of trust to be putting in me. And I do not know if I am that strong. Jet's going to look over at Dart. Uh, you're a bit better at uh, the, the rousing speeches. No, we, I mean, we appreciate your offer for help, and honestly, we'd be, we'd be very much worse without your assistance, and we appreciate you offering. So, we, we, uh, we believe. We believe in your ability. Okay, that's your rousing speech. I did have a rousing speech on hand, ready to go. But like, okay. I, I, I'm taking the easing nerves approach to it all. Okay, go ahead and roll me. Let's get let's get some of your um, what do you call it personality out there. So give me a 
I don't know. Let's do some dexterity contest etiquette. I will say real quick, Rygon, that there are those, uh, the social stats, you know, the tough, uh, cool, beauty, cute, smart. Okay. I just Which one did know. you think you used there? I, I wasn't sure. I was just, I wasn't sure if you'd, uh, you remembered them. No, I didn't. So which one did you think you used? Well, I th I think if I was to use one of the social sets here, I think so I was trying for more of the, like, diffuse nerves approach, I think I'd be going down more of the smart route, just being like, look, without your help, we'd be in a much worse state. So I really do appreciate you all can help us, and we believe... We believe in your ability, so... Alright. Put, put more of the logic in there. Alright, give me a smart contest etiquette. He kind of turns away from you, and just like, Your words are very kind, but I do not know if I can risk angering him. He's already consumed so much. Well, uh, unfortunately, we have to get across this river no matter what. So we can either try and do it on our own, which would definitely cause him to get angered, or we can get your help. I guess if you don't want to help, then uh, we'll just uh, have to do it ourselves. Um, Dart's going to be looking at the river because uh, he's just had a thought. Um, near the section of rubble building, which we attempted to originally cross, mm -hmm. does there appear to be any kind of change in the ferocity of the river cur or river currents? I'm not sure you're asking. Uh, is the water calmer closer to where the building is? Like, if if we were to go slightly downstream of where the building is that we try to cross, is the water slightly calmer? If I'm understanding you correctly, yes. So, like, if you go on, like, where the water's touching the rubble, it's calmer? Um, Just below it or just above it? Yeah, it's calmer. Because, um... What if it's, we... it's hitting essentially a wall. Mm -hmm. uh, what if um, Jolene were to use her ability to float around and essentially act as a secondary guide to the okay. little canoe? Um, so essentially, um, and actually, I feel really bad because we've not actually asked this individual's name. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to, I want to, I want to get to that in a second. Um, but I'm about to propose, you know. This individual, you know, helps steady one side of the canoe and Jolene floating around helps steady the other. Thus, there's an extra set of hands provi providing guidance and uh, we're doing it in the safest part of the river. All right, go ahead. Um, and I'm just going to say, and sorry, I feel actually very, very awkward for not asking this before, but um, so what is your name? In a second. Uh, give me a moment. Audio glitch. Okay, we're good. My name? My name? My name is... Yusuf. That is my name. Yusuf. Yusuf. How you spell that? Why you S U F Yusuf? Well, uh, Yusuf, it's it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. And apologies for not asking that before. Um, 
what if we were to go at the that point in the river there where the water seems calmer and our friend Jolene here were to act as a um, extra guide on the boat um, helping helping guide it from the front I I could do that I might not be able to pull but I can certainly help to steady But are you sure you will not reconsider? He might still know. We do, where we do have a friend in desperate need of of shelter, and we are just running from danger. And unless you have a safer a safer suggestion around, I think um, I think. Everyone here would agree it's a risk that we have no choice but to take. I do not know. This river was carved not too long ago. This city seems to become more flooded every year. Okay. I will help. But please make sure the rope is tight. Uh, Darth's just going to turn to Jolene to make sure that she acknowledges what's being asked. Um, say again? Uh, Darth's going to turn to Jolene and like make you know, sure that she can acknowledge what's being asked for this little task. Of course, darling. I can take care of that. That was scary, Rygon. What? That was scary. <laughs> Rygon is scary. He knows how to intimidate voices. What can I say? I've had practice. Um, but, um... Uh, but I guess group huddle time, like, so... Supply cart first, um... Just to test the viability. Um, anyone should go, should anyone go in the canoe with the supply cart? Do we have like our um like um I don't want I don't want to necessarily vote Argus. Um, Maybe Argus should, should I go, and Nazareth. I, I was gonna say should I go with the supply cart then? And then stay put on the other side and. Then we take the one with Ethan. Um, yeah, I would say maybe not you in the first one, uh, Dart. He kind of gestures at the water and then at Dart and back at the water. And I know. Just in case. I mean, uh, I mean someone's got to take the first, uh, the first trip. I'll take uh, the first trip then. Yes. If you insist, I don't mind going. We still need to make sure that we're not going to be attacked out there. And I believe in uh, Azarus bravery a bit more than... Well, your, yours in water. Uh, no, no offense meant. None taken. Absolutely. Are you sure about this? Argus will look to the water, the back of the group, and nod. Yeah. I mean, I can do a lot of things, I think. Actually, on I... second, actually, on second thought, uh, Jet, I'm going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go then. And Jet's climbing into the boat. Okay. Yeah. But, but, look, will look, uh, aghast. Don't worry, we need you, we, we need you over here more at the moment, Azareth. 
at the least, if we do get attacked, uh, maybe my fa phasing will work. Secretly, Jet is very much not confident in that, but <laughs> it's worth a shot. Oh, dear. Remember, you were the one that was trying to talk me out of it. Hi. Uh, but so we've got the supply pull go on. We got um, Jet in it, and we have Jolene pulling on the rope in the bow, and uh, Yusus, um, I guess, ready to push. Good luck. Go ahead. Like, um, I guess, like, Dart, um, is just going to give the boat the little push it needs away from the shoreline. Okay, and it's loaded up with your supply push go? Yes, it is. Okay. Jolene's, uh, at one side. Yusuf is on the other. Uh, yes. yes All right. And we have a very important role that's going to happen right now. Oh, no. You see, I know you all are brand new Pokemon and all that. But a bed is still a bed. And it might look like a boat. That doesn't always mean it is a boat. I'm sure you all are now getting what I'm what I'm putting down, right? It might fall apart within, like, three seconds of being a boat. Worse. It could just immediately sink. It might sink. not float. Exactly. So this next roll, pay very close attention to it, is going to determine whether or not your boat is actually a boat. If I roll a one or a two, it is not a boat. Okay, is so, everyone ready? So if, it's, if you roll a zero, then it's a boat. Yes. Oh, no. If I roll literally a three, four, five, six, it's a boat. But a one or a two, it's not a boat. It's not a boat. It's not a boat. I'm sure you all can guess what happens next. I'll go, pull up the uh, uh, I'll go pull up the Titanic music. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. start rolling up a new character. Oh, you, that's right. You're in the boat, aren't you? Roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chat. Should I be nice to them? You're asking the chat that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> The chat who loves to drop anvils on me. It's okay, my chat tends to be a little nicer. Can you use a party reroll? Yes, you can. Do we have a party reroll? Not enough ill. Gib Gab has given a reroll. Okay, I'll give it another reroll. Assumedly, you all want to try and save your not boat. Yeah, we, we prefer if it is actually indeed a boat. Okay. Okay, we got a five. We it's a, a boat. boat. It's a boat! Yay! It goes out onto the water and unsteadily wiggles back and forth. As almost as if it's trying to find its own center of gravity amongst the waves. Its side knocks against the rubble, but it does manage to float. All right, Dart. You're the only one on the boat, so or 
uh, Jet. You're on the one on the boat, so start doing stuff. Uh, he starts singing a sea shanty. Okay, how is that helping the boat get anywhere? I don't know what we could possibly, what Jet could do to help the boat get across. Um, call out any weird obstructions that are going in your way. Call out the shoreline. Fair. Yeah, sure. Uh, he'll be watching for the other shore to come up while getting in all. Of, yeah, that, that's what he's doing. And say again, I was yawning. Oh my god. He, he's watching for obstructions or. Uh, and also to call out the uh, other shore. Okay, go ahead and give me a um, an insight roll. Just insight or the alert thing? Insight. Because you're using it in two different ways. Okay, what'd you roll? Zero. You're so busy trying to tell them where to go. And you're so busy trying to look out for what's going on, you failed to notice something. The boat's not moving. Um, are 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 we uh? Like, how far out are we? Um, literally like a half foot. Oh. What does uh, the rest of the party see? Uh, they this. see they see Jet acting very commandingly. Oh, it's very impressive. <laughs> but the boat's not moving. Azrax is going to lean over to the other and say, Does he know the boat's not moving? They... I'd say let him have him have this moment, but I think we need to make haste. Um, Looks to the sky to check the time. L l looking at the boat, what is it? A lack of is the boat too heavy in the water? Is it like touching, still bottoming out? Or... It's bottoming out. Oh, just didn't get pushed far out out enough. But in order to push it out further, someone's gonna have to step into the water. Or find a stick. It, d does Argus still have a stick? Probably a longer stick. <laughs> I mean, still a stick. That's longer than our arms. It's also small enough to fit into his bag. Fair. Well, does uh, check, have, have it? check one of the buildings over there for a uh, piece of wood or something. One of the in the building that we ransacked was one of the splinters of the door long enough. Oh heck no! Fair. Hmm. Azareth or Amos? Right now, everything everything is telling me to go into the water, but I I want to make sure I'm not not looking at any other alternatives. I can't think of anything else. Just push it. Let's see if I I don't know. I think push it with. I I could do it. I could the boat if you don't want to go into the water I'll help you we're, 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 uh, we're, we're trying to avoid stepping into the water at all that's going to look around is there anything that looks like it might be a long enough stick to push the boat further
or maybe a pipe or literally anything. <laughs> Widening search to literally anything long enough to push the boat. I mean, Amos might be long enough. Uh, All right, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do a search, go ahead and give me a insight survival alert. Running through all options before we do the stupid. <laughs> What'd you get? I got a two. Alright, you you do find a fallen metal pole nearby, assumedly that had once belonged to a streetlight. It's kind of heavy, though. Dart's gonna drag it over and be like, Are you... Are it works where it all of us on this one. Is it bad if I could barely understand you while you said that? <laughs> We're gonna need all three of us on this one. It's it's it, it'll work, but it's a little heavy. Okay. All right. And this is gonna help pick it up. going to pick it up, we're going to line it up, and we're going to give them... Um, give them... Maybe uh, while we're all still here, we should try and find a way to wedge it into like the dirt or something. Uh, so that way uh, we could use our teeth like uh, kind of a guide uh, pulling it out because... Eventually, there's going to be nobody left over on this side to push it back out. And it does look pretty heavy, so it might be better to try and line it up next to the boat instead. If this works, the next one's just going to be the pool go with Ethan and Donk. We can figure out True. how the rest of us can get across late, um, in the third run. Fair enough. Why do I have the feeling that if we touched the water, we'd be perfectly fine? Oh, there's a high probability. But it's also a probability that I don't want to necessarily risk it this time. <laughs> Same, but... Looks back to the other time we had to solve riddles and, you know, the water, you know, was, you know, perfectly fine. Yeah, but it also didn't have a crazy person who was saying that it's not. Wait a freaking second. <laughs> no, they're not the same person. I don't know. All I do know is that, well, you've all have only had one block. I know. But it's also the block with the freaking river. You say like there isn't more. It's It's like, wait, it's all rivers? The city is always flooded. It been. always was. So after Jet says that, Alice is going to say, well, "We'll just push it across. Worry about it later." Yep. Let's 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 proceed. Okay, so go in, both of you give me a strength check. See if you're able to lift that pipe enough to push it. Okay, what'd you both get? I got a zero and Azrith got a two. Okay, you fall flat on your face, Azrith does all the work. The boat has been pushed. Jet? You're very commanding up there. What do you do? Well, now that we're... He, he's going to double check and make sure that we're actually underway. And then he's going to be watching for, you know, any other blockages along the way. And 
You're having a very successful time up there. <laughs> you know, as uh, you know, the, all the blockages that you have assumedly not found are still not found. And with the um, the boat now moving, you can f feel that things are kind of speedily moving along in your favor. You managed to get to the other side. Successfully. He's gonna hop out of the boat or the bed and try to get the pull go back off on this side. Okay. Uh, it getting... takes quite a bit of effort because, you know, it is a, ca a canoe and they're very oddly shaped, but you are able to eventually pull the uh, pull go out. And he will try to get it uh, back or uh, started back over to the other side. Yeah. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a roll. The roll is to determine whether anything actually happens. Um, because we're going to speed this along. And we're going to, you know, have your journeys be kind of culminated into one area. That way we're not spending uh, an inane amount of time of you guys saying, I go back, I go forth, I go back, I go forth. So instead, I'm going to roll. We're just going to see if something happens. Oh, that's not good. Nothing happens. Okay. <sighs> yep, you all are able to make it across just fine. The boat, however, has been rendered into an unusable state. It turns out putting two pole goes into it uh, was not very good for its interior. Valid. But we all made it across safely, I'm assuming. Yes, everyone has made it across safely. And Yusuf is now just, you know, he's just bobbing along in the water with his two wide fins. And he's, he just simply is like, Oh, thankfully, none of you managed to touch a drop of the water. Praise that you are all safe for at least one more day. Please. Be careful if you ever should come across the flooded streets once more. For he might be there, watching, waiting to devour. Now, I must make my leave so that I might warn others of this oncoming doom. We thank you Please. very much for your help, help Yusuf. Um... Of course. Thank you for giving me a little bit of your time. And, st and, st and stay safe yourself. Take care. That's right, Gibcat. We never did change the title. All right, and he dives into the water and he swims away. Congratulations. You all have conquered one out of ten blocks. Uh what? Oh, my. Only took us three three hours, you know. Oh, hey, about it was two a river. hours. <laughs> All right, what do y'all do next? I continue on and keep looking for that crescent-shaped uh, building because. Fairly okay. certain it's probably very dark at this point. Oh yeah, it is now quite dark. Uh, There's I, only I would... a sliver of moon in the sky. Smell of blood in the air. 
and a whole vast emptiness before you. Well, I'm assuming our ruckus of crossing the river probably made a sufficient amount of noise, so I don't really see much point in trying to be stealthy for this next block. I, I anyone, would agree. Anyone who wanted to find us will probably know where they are. So let's not rush, but let's not try to be overly stealthy at the same time. Just very logical. Okay. So what are you all doing? Uh, we are going to make through the block at a standard pace. Being cautious, but not committing to stealth. But not rushing either. Okay. Yeah. I get to look at some rolls. Where's my d20? There it is. Let me do a roll on my table. Okay. Choose, Seda. You're not supposed to be up here. <laughs> hey, what? You're up here. Go, shoot. I can see your hand. But no, I'm... Oh, you know, you probably see my screen, my thing move to the other monitor. Maybe. But your hand's still up here. True. The upper part of the table is for DM only. So I will show you exactly where my stuff is right now, but I'm not actually seeing anything. I've only just seen my character screen right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a very, very good excuse, huh? Looking at all my, all my stuff here. Hmm? Yeah, okay. 1d1 damage. All right, you all ready for the next bit? Yeah. All right. Time. Are you ready? Are you really ready? As ready as we're gonna be. Okay. More animal. Yep. I'm not worrying about it. Yep. We well, can't do anything until we're animals back. Okay. Where me? How y'all doing? I'm doing well. I'm, I'm a little good. sleepy. It's four a.m. now. Is Wernie asleep? I know he was going to go do something, but he hasn't. He hasn't spoken in a while. Oh, yeah. You're hey. okay. I hear you. You okay? Oh uh, yeah. You fall asleep. I am feeling a little sleepy. Okay. Is there anything we can do for you? Um, I stood up, did a stretch. I'm okay. All right. So you're just going to stretch for a second then? Yep. All right. We'll give you about a minute to stretch then. I'm going to quickly use the restroom then. Go ahead. All of you, if you need some water or whatever, go ahead and, go ahead and get it done. I am good on water and stuff. Snack sounds really good, but I can't. I 
Someone needs a cup of coffee? Maybe a little bit. You're sleepy too, Karma. Well, I appreciate you coming by. On your sleepy power? <laughs> and all right, Ken Goo, thanks for coming by. I'm back. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right, we're just waiting for Rainy. Where I need to finish this stretch. I'm here. Sometimes I can still hear his voice. Morning. All right. So. Oh, is Arzy here? Hi, I'm here. Okay. So as you all continue moving forward, you notice that underneath your feet, the quality of the road seems to be getting finer. Instead of it being some black rock, it now appears to be made out of a, an almost cobblestone-like fixture. The houses around you are, or the crumpled buildings around you are also appearing to be a bit nicer, made of a finer material. Still weathered and destroyed, but somehow better. As you move forward, you come across what appears to be a vast emptiness. You can hear the sound of running water, a large swath of running water somewhere in front of you and spanning it appears to be a bridge of some sort and upon that bridge are a dazzling display of twinkling iron lanterns that have been fixed uh, fixated onto the uh, bridge itself It looks very nice and very fine. You can see that the bridge extends off into the darkness. Only the twinkling of the lights in the distance giving any indication that it has maybe perhaps some end. The snow is falling around you. Your footsteps behind you now covered. What do you do? I say we carry on. Any reason to not carry on? Precisely. I don't trust it. I mean, it it, it is an overwhelm over like an. Let me rephrase it. It's a oddly well kept 
structure considering everything around it um, for mm -hmm. a place that's seemingly abandoned, but I don't see many alternatives. As it would just like to go on, not, you know, stop, you yeah. know, inspect, detective work. Just well, yeah. ahead. We'll, we'll go ahead and go across then, but Jet is wary. Well, you are animal. Yeah, let's keep going. Okay. You pull your push goes, your pull goes onto the bridge. The snow underneath them, making it easier to slide them along. You're not sure how the lights are on for this structure. But they appear nice and beautiful in the snowy night. There's no sense of any footprints on the bridge. It's just all of you. And the way forward. Step by step, you all take. Hearing the running water flow beneath. It's an almost magical moment. You reach about what you all assume is around a quarter of the way over. What do you do? Proceed. Yeah. Yep. Mm, keep going. Proceed unless there's a good reason to stop. Okay. You continue moving forward. The glow of the lights casting themselves upon your walking forms. Each one almost like a watchful guardian in the night. You see Ethan turns in his sleep within his polgo, completely unaware of the situation around him, as Doc walks almost stoically beside him keeping an eye on the little rodent. The bridge twists, turns, wiggles and waves as you walk along. And before you all know it, you're on the other side. As you finish walking across, the lights themselves go dim and eventually you are all plunged back into the darkness of the night. This section of your journey has now ended. And you can see in front of you the Crescent Building. Well, we made it. Well, Jet, you have the map. Where to from here? Jet takes a glance back at the bridge before uh, looking down at the, you know, pulling out the map and looking at it. Uh, was anything that we came across kind of detailed on the map at all now that we've gone past them? You can begin to recognize some of the features. But due to the age of the map, as well as the change of the landscape, it's hard to exactly put it as a one-to-one. -one. Still, okay. the bridge itself that you just crossed has, well, it is on the map. Before Almost, the... Uh, surprisingly intact. Before the uh, Crescent building or after? Before. Okay. Ah, uh, well, it looks like the uh, Crescent uh, building should be uh, up ahead still. Not how much, like, based on where we started and where the bridge is, 
Are we like halfway, three quarters, a quarter? We, didn't didn't Ryan need you to say we see the crescent building? Yeah. Oh, my bad. I derped. <laughs> That's right. You it's did like, say okay, that. So we, so we see the bridge. We see the crescent building, Jet. Where to? From and here? this was where the turn was, correct, Rygon? Like the first uh, turn. The turn. I, I feel like you told any turns. You did say that it goes through the streets and stuff. I feel yeah. like you said that it. Uh, turns oh, you were asking for recognizable. You were asking for a recognizable landmark. This is the first recognizable landmark. Okay. Uh well, this. Uh, so it continues on straight past here. Yeah, you could choose to continue on straight past, or you can choose, considering well, it is rather dark, to take shelter. I'm asking if the map continues on straight past here. Yeah. Okay. Goes for another eight blocks. Uh, the map until you says reach the thin line. Okay. So it just goes straight until that thin line. No, it's not straight. I mean, it's still oh. like meanders around the city, but yeah. Okay. Uh, well, it says that uh, it, it just goes straight past here, but yeah, I, I would say that we take a shelter here for the rest of the night. We, we've kind of been traveling a lot today, and there's been a lot that's happened. Dart's going to turn to the Crescent Building and just see if the any entrance is um, open and available. Jet is looking for any markings on the building, anything that might indicate what it was. Hmm. Good question. Let me think for a second. As he's following Dart up looking for an entrance. As um well. you actually can't you, you actually can't really see much. It's too dark. Oh, yeah, All that you Jet. can see in... Go ahead. Jet still has his lantern with the pole. Sure. You ever lit it? He did not light it, no. Okay. But I he mean, will light it for us going. And he, he will uh, kind of push up to the, his nose in there and use his spark ability to... Uh, or nuzzle ability to light it. as we approach the building. Uh, oh, I actually, you're making me think on my feet here. <laughs> ah, here we go. All that you can see on the building is a rather large set of letters. Many of them have fallen off, though, and to places that you cannot tell. But what remains simply says, Agua. Agua. Hmm. A little kind of shrug and... Continue on uh, up to looking for an entrance. Okay. You do find a wide set of double doors. They appear to still be intact, if rusty, and not locked, as one of them is ajar. Dart's going to carefully pull it to or push it to, depending on which way it actually moves. It slides open. Uh, Dart's going to just jet, like, can you shine your light in? Uh, jet will kind of push, uh, angle the stick so the lantern is pushed into the Entrance in. Uh, 
Because it's on a stick that's, you know, strapped to his side. Okay. As you hold the little lantern in, casting its somber glow, you find that the inside of the double set doors is what appears to be a wide lobby. There's only a few, you know, maybe some small benches here. And near the back, you can see a circular desk. You can also see extending off into the reaches of the building, various different hallways. Um, well, there's nothing in here. Uh... Maybe we go take shelter behind that desk and head back out in the morning after we get some sleep. Good. But let's get let's get the pool goes in. Let's get, let's get the pool goes and everyone else in, and then we could probably find a better place to rest for the evening. And if we find anything in here, well, the pool goes right by the by the doors. Uh, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, are we in visual distance of the rest of the group? Or are we, is it too dark for that? I mean, everyone's kind of following you guys, so... Well, I didn't hear anyone, like, directly following, but it's going to be just... Dark's just going to make the quiet gesture of, like, it's... Come on in. This this will have to do. Hey, let's rest here. So, uh, are are we uh, actually going to? Are you wanting to look around or just settle down, Dart? Well, this yeah. seems like a. Uh, approximately, how tall did the building look when we walked in? Like one story or two, or more. Is that what you're asking, Seda? Yes. Okay, so you all are just going to go behind the desk? Oh, no, I was asking how tall is the structure that we entered from what we could tell in the darkness. It's about, it's one story, but it's very wide. Okay. Well, I'm thinking, Jet, let's take a, let's keep everyone here. Let's look around just the general floor. Just make sure there's, there's no surprises for us. And then I think... Being behind the desk might be a a good start. I I would agree. We uh yeah, at least I'm kind of assuming the front of the building is like all glass. Or am I wrong? Um, it's not all glass. It's just the glass front doors. Oh, the okay. rest of the building appears to be made from a much stronger material. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say uh, that desk over there at least uh, blocks view of us. Uh, it looks like it might be big enough for us all to hide behind. And then otherwise, yeah, we can go ahead and go look around. Maybe there are some supplies in here that could be useful as well. It's yep. late. We've been through a lot. We should just lie down and rest. I, you, you get some rest, Azrath, but I do want to make sure that this this building is safe for us. Uh, yeah, we. Uh, it's really not. We we've seen a lot of danger here. Uh, Azrath, Amos, uh, or Amos, do you want to come with us or? Yeah, I'll come with. All right. Oh, RZ had to step away. So, uh, Jet well, was just going to suggest that RZ, uh, or Azrith, uh, get a fire started. A small one, but 
some extra. I was gonna warmth. say. I, I was gonna say, is that why is in a building that doesn't at the moment have a chimney? Probably not, but at the same time, it's cold, and I'm sure everybody could probably use the boost of morale. Honor, are you sure you want to introduce more fire at this stage? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay, I, I point taken. Yeah, more... We'll drag the pole goes behind the desk out of you, and then we will start looking at the other rooms just to make sure that there's no hidden danger. And secondly, if there's any potentially useful supplies, even though we are kind of already slightly overburdened, as is, I think. Yes. Okay. We we are slightly overburdened, but it, there's also the chance that we could find something that's more useful than what we have right now. We could also Natural. find something that is just going to mess you up. Well, yeah, but I think that us settling down just to camp, there's a very high probability that if it's in here, it'll probably find us anyways. Three. Unless. Unless what? Anyway, we are... Oh, oh, nothing, nothing. Definitely don't have any plans for you. So we are reaching about 12.30. Um, so we've only got about a half hour left in this session. This next section, uh, depending on how you all choose to engage with it, um, may take longer than a half hour to complete. So I will leave you all with a choice. You could have a moment to RP at the, right now. You could all go out and do whatever you want, but just know that it's going to be cut off in the middle of it. Yeah, or we can continue going past the half hour um, and further into the evening. So it's kind of up to you what you all want to do. Or we could even just end right now and just um, wait for the next session. I personally would vote for end since daylight savings has pushed the clock forward, so it is technically actually 4.30 for me now as opposed to the normal 3.30. Yeah, it's 3.30 for me. We have unfortunately lost technically in, in that sense an hour of session. Unfortunately. Yeah. And I think if this is a, a mini exploration section and since we are already down you know, two players, I think this might be a reasonable spot to stop. We are inside a apparent area shelter. We're going to clear it out and then hopefully if it's clear, spend the night and then carry on. And I think that might be a good bit of a good jumping off point for the others when they return. I would agree. I would personally, you know, I, I'm, I'm always all for more poker roll. But, at the same time, I understand the logic. Okay. Then we shall consider this to be our stopping point. Alright, to everyone out there, thank you so much for stopping on by. I hope you all enjoyed the session. Uh, our team certainly still has quite a bit of a journey to get ahead, uh, ahead of them before they get to something significant. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. And golly, that door. They certainly had a tough time opening it, didn't they? Anyway, I hope to see you all for the next session, the next episode of you on YouTube. And yeah, have your all have yourselves a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, good night. We'll see you next time. And for my part. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today for the Starlight Expeditions Poke Roll, our Pokemon Mystery Dungeon tabletop campaign. Check out our website, cgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Twitter, Patreon, and more there on the website, as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. It is because of your support that I'm able to continue bringing these streams to you all. 
I really cannot do this without your guys' help and support, so thank you. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It is one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by simply sharing the stream around. But for now, thank you all so much for joining, and I bid you the most fondest aduke. Start. Four. All right. I'll save the room. <laughs>